Hi, welcome to Live on KEXP at Home. I'm your host, DJ Morgan. I'm on Saturdays, noon to 3 on Listener Power 90.3 FM, KEXP in Seattle, streaming online all over the world at kexp.org and on the mobile apps. We also love to bring you live performances here on the KEXP YouTube channel, and we're so happy to continue to connect you with live music and artists as we remain socially distant and working from home and all of this is possible with your support so thank you so much for supporting kexp and we are so happy today to be joined by amelia and nick of sylvanesso welcome yay (laughs) i'm so glad to see you both how are you we are good yeah i'm good we're great i'm yeah feels good today yeah Yes, today is a good day. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you live, and are you are you with us from your house right now? We live in Durham, North Carolina. This Here is our home. Are. This is our home. This is our plant. That's our that one. Do they do they have names? <laughs> this one doesn't actually have. Actually, this one is called uh, a lot of different things that are based on uh, characters from Lord of the Rings. So, awesome. Yeah, it's called Gollum Hort mm-hmm. or Hobbit's Flute. Nice. <laughs> Proud feet. So There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, how are things with you? How, how are you doing? We're pretty good. I mean, relatively speaking, we're fantastic. Yeah, uh, in the grand <laughs> scheme, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, we have food. I can't tell if you're frozen or if you're just really good at... Oh, you did oh, freeze no. for a Hello. second. Hey. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I legit thought you were like committing to freezing for a second that was awesome <laughs> i was like wow you're very that would be, still i'm realizing now we should do that as a prank yeah we <laughs> that would um, be an awesome prank <laughs> um yeah what we, we're doing great yeah in the grand scheme of things we have food and we have friends and we have entertainment so it's good we have a record awesome. out it's great yeah we're putting our record into the world Hell yes, you have a new record out. Huge congrats on the new album. Thank you. Uh, Free Love. I love it. It's so good. I've listened to it a lot already. I cannot sing its praises enough. So huge congrats on that. Thank you you very much. I'm so glad you like it. We're so proud of it. Yay. Yeah, speaking of being proud of it, I've heard you actually, uh, or I've seen you describe it already as the best thing you've ever written, which must feel amazing. Um, Can you talk about the process of recording this record and, and what went into um, making it some of your best material to date? I think it was, I think part of it was just that it's our third record. So instead of having to deal with the self-consciousness of making a second release to try to prove the fact that um, our our work is worth listening to on the third one, it was as if we got to play again. Yeah, it felt, it felt really... Um, it just felt like the whole thing really flowed. It was like we just let let the material kind of happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it felt like, and and just so many things happened over the course of it that kind of built our confidence and made us realize that the that our band was kind of unbreakable. Um, and it, it it gave us it gave just gave us the confidence to kind of do whatever we wanted. It felt great. That's awesome. Before we talk a little bit more about the record, uh, you have recorded some live performances of songs for us. I'm so excited to see these. So I'd love to get into the first song and then we'll come back. Um, This first song is from the new record, Free Love. This is Ferris Wheel. Before we get into it, what is this song about? Oh, this song is a flirty, fun romp about being like 15 and figuring out that you're kind of hot. And flirting and being a consensual creep. Nice. (laughs) I love that. This is Ferris Wheel uh, from Sylvanesso, live on KEXP at home. Hey, KEXP. We're Sylvanesso. Thanks so much for having us again. This is Ferris Wheel. August in the heat, sweaty in the street, tilt a whirly. I can feel your ass, find me in the crowd, think you like me now. I've been seeing you every day, on my block in your white tee. You're looking pretty fine to me, so I are you waiting? When I'm swimming in my dancing shoes Asphalt's hot and my knees all bruised It's a summer, got a lot to prove Can't wait to do it, can you? Oh, I'm swaying from side to side In 
the neon lights Saying that Halo Underworld got vibes You're divided for tonight Take me, take me, me Ferris wheeling, big It's the air I crave When we're up so high Salty wind and I Make out mountain town I've been seeing you every day On my block in your white tee You look the pretty fine to me So why are you waiting? When I'm summoning in my dancing shoes Asphalt's hot and my knees all bruised It's a summer, got a lot to prove Can't wait to do it, can you? Oh, I'm swaying from side to side live from Sylvan Esso, live on KEXP at home. I cannot wait until we're at a live show and I can dance to that in real life, but it was super fun dancing to it in my seat. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so good. Um, so something that's been very popular during these COVID times for a lot of people has been Animal Crossing. I bring that up because uh, you made a video for that song using Animal Crossing. Please Tell me more about that. We did. We worked with this really wonderful group of, of sweeties named Crossing the Runway, who began by recreating like high fashion looks in Animal Crossing, and then offered to help us make a music video for Ferris Wheel. Yeah, at first we just wanted t-shirts. We were like, yeah, oh, let's, make some, like... let's turn our merch designs into t-shirts in Animal Crossing. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> and they were like, we could just do the video. Yeah, like, exactly. Absolutely. We were like, uh, <laughs> Yes. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. Yes. I love it. It's so joyful to watch. <laughs> um, so it's clear that in Sylvan Esso, your your partnership is really at the core of your songwriting process. How has your collaboration changed over the years um, that you've been writing music together? I think the most notable part on this record that has shifted is that our our jobs have been slowly going like this more and more we spend much more time together in the studio sitting side by side really like actually hammering out what the arrangement of the songs are going to be yeah the production is like a complete collaboration at this point mm -hmm. uh, and i feel like that's just that's just that our the language we've developed over the last geez, eight years has like just gotten more and more specific like like we can really talk like we can talk when we're producing something in a way that might not make sense to anybody else, but we each completely understand what we're trying to do. And it's usually because we're reacting to, we're trying to make an emotional arc happen uh, first rather than a musical one. And so it's just, I feel like we finally got to a place where we like really know what the other one is saying. Feelings first, <laughs> feelings nice. first. <laughs> That must be a great feeling to get to that point where you really feel like you can vibe together and do some really collaborative co-production. Um, what what sort of roles do you take in that in that co-production um, that you speak about? I mean, it it usually just looks like us sitting in a room together, but <laughs> but uh, I generally engineer, but it, it's a lot of 
it's a lot of back and forth about what's working and what's not working. Mm -hmm. And, and we're just trying to, if something's not working, it's us like usually arguing, trying to figure out why it's not working and figuring out what the song actually wants. It's almost like the song becomes its own other person in the room that Mm. we're trying to discover. Mm. Um, Yeah. I, I don't know how else to describe it besides that. Yeah. That's great. And Nick, I know um, you've sort of delved deeper into your knowledge of modular synths as well. Have you discovered any new sounds during the making of Free Love? Oh, I mean, absolutely. The The beautiful part about modular synthesis is that um, inspiration can come from just wondering what would happen if you did something. So um, a lot of the starts for these songs uh, came from me just exploring uh, this instrument that I had built. Um, and it's, it's nice to have an instrument that can surprise you. Um, you know, I I think that, uh, I've played bass. I played a lot of different, like other instruments my whole life. Um, and those were able to surprise me when I was younger. And this one truly feels like a conversation almost, um, you know, in a way that feels really at this phase in my musical life feels really inspiring. That's awesome. I love hearing that. And since the the last record, What Now, came out, um, you both built a new studio for yourselves. How has having that personal space been for your songwriting process? It's so nice. It's the best. It is the best. In actuality, uh, the this like the place that we are performing in for our live performances, that's our the A room of our studio, which was not completed until after. We finished the record. Yeah, we did the whole thing oh, in this wow. tiny little other room yeah. in the same house. So, like, you can hear you can hear that room being built on the record, like in rooftop dancing. Yeah, there's a moment mm-hmm. where you hear like the circular saws going. Yeah, is that um, is that studio separate from your actual house? Like, can you describe the the area where the studio is? It's on a bunch of land. Um, it on like old farmland. Well, it's in the middle of the woods. It's yeah. it's uh, it's in this like kind of coming down a big, large hill, small mountain large in hill, Western small Chapel mountain. Hill. I it's, love that. It's this beautiful that I love. Just the woods of North Carolina are are so inspiring to us. And uh, this is this is in this beautiful big uh, wilderness out there, and we were we feel super lucky. There's a lot of tiny toads that live out there, and also oh. one box turtle. Oh, a box turtle. We've also got a large, a large number of skinks, which is I so think many the skinks. coolest. And an anole. <laughs> what a is a skink? Life. Is that is that an amphibian? Oh, a skink is a lizard. Uh, it is a lizard. Okay, it's a lizard with a blue tail. Aww. And if you grab it by the tail, it'll give you its tail as a present. It's, oh right, it, they're like they little aliens. Off. They're the coolest. Yeah, which I don't, I don't, I don't recommend it, but it will. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked you haven't done it. Shh. <laughs> Um, North Carolina is a very beautiful place. I actually used to live in New Bern, quite close to the oh, coast. Yeah. So yeah, huh. long time ago. But yeah, uh, North Carolina is absolutely beautiful, especially the woods. So it must be very magical to have that studio out there. That's it's awesome. Really, really nice. That's so cool. And um, I'd love to get into another song. But before we do that, um, late last year, you were able to perform a short run of dates with um, a 10-piece band performing some of your older songs, and you called that tour with, and you released a live album earlier this year as well, back in April. Um, How did re-exploring these older songs with new people, how did that feel? How did those performances go for you? It was amazing. I mean, it it was so much more... um important, I think, to the arc of our band than I ever expected it to be. Um, uh, for a lot of reasons. I think, I think for me, uh, I think I was worried, especially moving into this new record, that I wasn't going to have the same emotional connection to our old songs mm. as I used to. I mean, just because I'm getting older. Mm. Um, and that tour, one of the many things it did was it really showed me the way that I could connect with that material now. Um, in a way that, that felt really true. Um, but the other wonderful thing that it did was, I think it just gave us the confidence as we were going down the home stretch of this record. This That, that tour happened when we were probably just over the halfway point. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that was kind of unexpected was that it, it, by making our band way, way bigger than it normally is, we were able to lean into getting much quieter during the shows. And that just 
made us realize that like the thing that that we naturally tend towards, which is making material that's going to really work like on a huge stage at Coachella or something like that, um, that that our band exists in both of those uh, dynamics, that we have to have both of them in order for like us to feel like the band, the message of the band is really complete. And we were with more people, we were just able to get so quiet during those shows. And it when we were finishing, it just made us feel like we, we left so many songs more sparse and bare and even without drums a bunch of times. Songs that we otherwise would have really dug into the composition of and like amped up and overproduced. We were able to just leave as they were. Um, it, it was a totally transformative experience. That's amazing. And yeah, that, that concept of, of leaning into quiet and space and open, that's really something that I can hear in some of the new songs on the new record, um, which I want to ask you more about, but I'd love to get into another song. This comes from your last record, What Now, that came out back in 2017. It's also one of the songs that you performed um, on with. I would love to hear um, what you think about Die Young what, when you wrote it, and then also, do you have any impressions of it from when you performed it with With? Um, I I guess when I wrote it, it was I was experimenting with allowing myself to write love songs in general, um, and I wanted it to be kind of a strange uh, goth anthem about having to stick around to be with the person that you love. Um, playing it with with one of the more remarkable things about exp- expanding our band was that we were able, instead of like just being an echo chamber of Nick and I, where like we're constantly like bouncing ideas off of each other, all of a sudden we got to be the leads of a band. Like we got to be band leaders in this brand new way that made us realize um, really just how magical the thing that we've created together is. So getting to play Da Young is such a bombastic song that's like completely led by my voice. So like getting to like, it's so different from like our natural patch when we're together is much easier to, to like to trigger, but I have to be constantly on the grid with it otherwise i i can i can like mess up the structure of the song and being able to just actually leap off the cliff into the chorus with this full band behind me was just invigorating that's amazing this is die young live on kxp at home from sylvanesso this is die young you ready sandy I had it all planned out before you met me Was gonna leave early and so swiftly Maybe in a fire crash off a ravine People would weep at tragic so early I was gonna die young Now I gotta wait for you, hun now I gotta wait for you, uh, uh, honey. Now I gotta wait for you, honey. I was a firecracker, baby, with something to prove. Now I gotta contend with the living birds. I could have missed it, I never knew. It. Chain reaction, but you're holding the fuse. I was gonna die young Now I gotta wait for you, hun Now I gotta wait for you, uh, uh Now I gotta wait for you, hun Come on Thank you. 
hours go today. Sylvan Esso live on KXP at home. I love how much fun you guys have together. That's such a fun thing to watch in your performance space. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird thing to watch yourself in your own performance space. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but... I'm aware. As an interviewer. <laughs> uh, that's so good. And I love that you described that as like a, a goth anthem too. That's so that's so apt for that song, um, sp- especially that album. What now? Um, you've said in interviews that uh, you always make records about how the world is dying, but to me, this new album, Free Love, feels much more introspective and and less about the world and and more about looking inward. Um, what does Free Love mean to you, and and what were these songs about as a as a whole? One of the things I love about the about uh, the name is that it can mean so many different things depending on your mood. Um, sometimes I think about it as a call to action. Sometimes I think about it as a dig because no one buys records anymore. <laughs> sometimes, and sometimes I think about it as a as a. I guess it's a different kind of call to action. Or like it can be soft or or like really strong in the same time. Um, we came up with the title for it right after I wrote the song "Free." Nick always knows what our records are going to be called, and I always know what the cover is going to be. So when I wrote "Free," he was immediately like, "Free love, that's it." And we were both like immediately like, never mind, that's a bad idea, <laughs> which we always do with every title that we come up with. Everything starts as a joke and then ends up on the record cover. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> that's always the way. <laughs> yeah, I think when I when she wrote that song, it felt like it put into focus all these other songs that she had written, to me at least. I, I kind of interpreted what she was doing as, as um, reacting to her anxiety about the state of the world by, by kind of remembering all of the different ways that she had felt love in her life. Um, Cause at that point we had, we had frequency, we had ring, we mm-hmm. had, we had Ferris wheel, we had, mm-hmm. we had all these a rooftop, um, at which all to me are, were like different kinds of love at different ages and free turned that and made her look inward. And it, it just felt like it, it, it framed this, kind of thing that was the guiding light for the rest of the record, which was just um, trying to help people unlock that or us unlocking that and hoping that other people resonate with that idea, trying to figure out how to, how to make it get back to the place where it's easy. Hmm. Yeah. I really wanted to ask you about that song free because it's right in the middle of the record and it's this very different sound and it, it feels, um, I mean, all of your songs are vulnerable, but it feels like the most vulnerable song on the record where you start off by both saying I love you to each other and then having that that open, quiet space that's really focusing on Amelia singing. Um, it really, truly does feel like the centerpiece for that record. It's really amazing. 
Thanks. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you like it. Thanks. I love how everyone loves to talk about how we say I love you to each other at the beginning of it, when to me, like, what I'm actually saying in that moment, when you can hear Nick be like, I love you, and I'm like, I love you. Which, like, it also, You do like, sound annoyed. Yeah, yeah. but it, what it means is, like, stop talking. Let me let me do this song. So I, I think it's, like, an easy thing to romanticize, but, like, it's yeah. about, the it's about like, the reality. It's a different kind of intimacy. I think, I think that was the thing that we really wanted to lean into on this record was, like, songs like Die Young feel very much like where we were at in the last record to me. Um, mm-hmm. This record feels like we were looking, it was more about looking back from a more mature place. Mm, mm. Um, like I think ring feels like the natural next version of die young and, and free uh, including that uh, the I love you's was a way to, to lean into the intimacy of the record and, and acknowledge that, that I love you when, once you're in a, a very long committed relationship means a lot of different things. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, I could not say better myself. That's absolutely right. Um, So speaking of that song being very open and then, you know, most of your material is very dancey. Um, Your live shows are super movement focused. Everybody wants to dance. Amelia, you're an amazing dancer. Um, And the 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 energy of all of the songs are are always really high. Uh, A few of the songs on Free Love like I said, are those open, more spacious songs. I'm so curious how you're going to translate those into a live show. Do you think you'll keep those sounds the same and just build set lists that just move? Or do you think you're going to change the sounds of those songs and and make them a little more dancey during live shows? I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Um, I feel more empowered to have quieter moments in our set yeah. than I ever have before. At the same time, sometimes like we we always have a couple of like real ballads on the records and sometimes they're really really hard to sing when the audience can't go there with us or refuses to um so i'll have to see i think it's part of it that's partially a curatorial set list thing where like we can we can build it in so that there's a natural dip Mm -hmm. but i'm not going to force it i i also feel like you you kind of make your audience what you what you want. I feel like our fans, the people who like our band, have always responded to just what do we naturally put out and come to a show expecting the breadth of that. Mm-hmm. And I think every time we've leaned away from that, it's just been our insecurity about making it work. Um, I, I feel like more empowered than ever to to make more dynamic set lists. All that stuff, it all works in the same world to me. It makes total sense. Now smash cut to me, you know, a year from now when we're playing shows and I'm like, this isn't working. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that is going to have to be something you just try it out when it happens. Yeah. Um, but one song that I'm sure people will dance to is the song Rooftop Dancing. And I'm, I'm sure you probably wrote this song before COVID, but it's sort of prophetic in a way, right? Like I've heard so many people doing things on rooftops. I had um, a listener one day when I was doing my show tell me they were getting married right now on their rooftop and asked me to play a song. So like there's, you know, a a lot of that kind of thing is happening. Um, Can you talk about what you were actually thinking about when, when you wrote this song? I wanted to... I was thinking about New York City specifically, but I wanted to write a song about the romance of feeling like a little small being in the midst of so many other stories happening all around you. And like the feeling of being a community member when all you have to do to contribute to that community is just go about your day and see what you see and feel what you feel. Hmm. This is Rooftop Dancing from the new record Free Love from Sylvanesso live on KXP at home. This is Rooftop Dancing. Concrete, concrete, shining everywhere. Moonlight spread and the kids don't care. Meet me at the street, like gonna take you there. Take you rooftop dancing. Rooftop 
Look at, look at, look at I can see everything Things double touching, singing they things Counting off time, doing they things Look at, look at, look at I can see everything Things double touching, singing they things Counting off time, doing they things Rooftop dancing from Sylvanessa live on KXP at home. Uh, what was that sample at the end there? Pizza, pizza, daddy o. What is that? <laughs> uh, that's a selection of kids singing like playground songs. Yeah, it's part of the Lomax collection from the Smithsonian. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, you also made a really nice video for that song as well totally filmed in new york when when was that filmed and can you talk about the the process of making that video it was filmed during the vid we asked covid um the vid (laughs) we we asked our uh cheryl dunn who's a like a documenter of new york and has been for a long time to make the video and she it was one of the lovelier collaborator collaborative experiences that I've had that I know I do um, that I've had in terms of making videos where I was able to just get her on the phone and be like what I want is the real New York in summer and she was like oh that's great because everyone who who like only half likes it here has left mm-hmm. so like she just took a couple of days with a bunch of, it's all like everyone in that video is her friends and family. Yeah, we loved her work so much that it was kind of this easy we we trusted her to to make the vision happen and she just nailed it. It's a really beautiful video and you know, normally I would advise don't look at the comments, but I have to say the YouTube comments on that video are the nicest most positive comments I have ever seen. People You don't say. I know. People are just like Pour, outpouring how comforting your music is to them, how comforting that video is to them. What do you think uh, about your music is resonating with people? And then just more broadly, why do you think music is something that's so comforting to humans? I mean, music, by listening to it, you feel heard. I think that's the thing. Music, it, the beauty of it is that it, it communicates feelings that you can't just say through words. So if you have this experience or this emotional state that you're in. And then you listen to a piece of music that describes that back to you. You feel connected. You feel connected to like the fabric of our species. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just like a, it's just the best thing. And I think especially in times when everyone's on their own, uh, we're reaching out to find that connection more than ever. Yeah. 
One of my great teachers, the professor Milford Graves, likes to talk about how um, the drum beat is as close to the heartbeat as you can get. And when you are all listening to a song together, your bodies slow down in the same way. Mm. Um, it's a great community builder. Yeah, and people are really resonating with that. And uh, you did a video for the song Frequency that's out on the new record as well. And so cool. It was directed by Moses Sumney. Can you talk about that a little bit? We love Moses. We've known him yeah. for so long. He lives in Asheville, so we could do a socially distanced video just by hopping in the car and like scooting real fast up there. Yeah. Um, it was real. Another like great collaboration where yeah. he had an idea and I had an idea and we like just slowly got it there together. Um, beautiful day of shooting where normally bec we're so involved in our videos that um, doing the balance between like directing and, and like being the main character in the, in the video is really hard yeah. for me. And this was one of the first times where I just like got to be the guy. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Which yeah. felt, which was so nice and relaxing to just get to like dance and be a character in this cool magical world, world that Moses had created about a song that I'd written about being in love and small. Yeah, it's it's so wonderful to to hand those things off to creative people that you trust because it's like you're able to see your work th through their eyes in a different way. Mm. You know, and this was just I. It was so wonderful being on set and watching it happen and watching him interpret this. It, it just felt, it felt like it was a, it was an a experience I'll never forget. It was wonderful. You can tell you feel really comfortable, Amelia, in the video. It, it really, really translates when you watch it, for sure. Um, you're both so creative. One, one thing that I really wanted to ask you about going back to the song Free, I read that you recorded part of it, like you broadcasted it through an FM frequency. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Oh, please tell me about that. I really want to know about that. Well, this all started. So I've always been obsessed with when you're on road trips and when you're in between two radio stations and they're each fighting for the frequency. Yep. Like I, that's just a thing that I've always thought is one of the coolest experiences that you can have with music because it's this like one-off performance that's just for you based on physics in this one moment. And, and you, your car is the only place that's happening. Mm -hmm. And so we've always been kind of talking about like how, how those things make us feel and how we could use that intentionally. And so I got a couple of those little, you remember those little FM transmitters that you'd plug into your Discman so you could yeah. play it in the car? Yeah. <laughs> you can still get those. And so I got a bunch of them and we just started experimenting with how transmitting things through the radio and then recording a boombox playing them made us feel. And it, we realized that that there's this inherent quality to FM transmitted radio that there's like a, there's a comfort and a warmth there that is just like instinctual. Like, especially if you grew up listening to the radio at all, it's just this kind of compression and distortion that you just kind of know in your bones. Um, and so we did, it's all over the record but we we started experimenting with like putting maybe just the pianos or just the vocals uh, through this. And with Free, we just did the entire song through it. The whole mix went through it. And we like loved how it turned out. We were going to, we thought it was just going to be the demo and it ended up being the final song. Yeah. Knowing that and listening to it, it really does have that warmth. You're so right. Like you can actually feel that it sounds like the radio. That's so cool. Um, and speaking of radio, the next song is called Radio. Do you, obviously you have a deep connection with radio. Is this song, um, what is what was this song about? This is from the last album, What Now? And we've played it a trillion times on KXP. We love this song, so I'd love to hear more about it. <sighs> Let's see. Well, when I wrote it, I had wanted to write a song about both like uh, complacency in uh accepting accepting what you're given which at the at that point was most I wrote it from it began at kind of a bitter place of being like w want wanting to be on the radio more and also but also like uh accepting distraction in a different way than I had and then it shifted into this idea of realizing that like 
so many of my decisions had been molded around trying to get on the radio. So it was like a, like a, so it kind of turned into like a Randy, you're being a hypocrite song. (laughs) That's also, that also like now my relationship with the radio is so different in that like through writing the song, which got us on the radio much more (laughs) than it had been before. I realized that like, the, one of the more amazing parts about the radio is that it is for everybody mm-hmm. in like, I got into music because I believe that like music was an art form that everyone felt entitled to have an opinion about. And then the radio is even deeper in that because you can, the only requirement is a radio, which is everywhere and relatively cheap. So we were able to get to more people than we never dreamed of. And I think that's such a wonderful element of the yeah. radio itself. Radio is a magic thing. This is the song Radio from Sylvanesso live on KXP at home. This is Radio. Thanks for having us. Picking the truth in a new pop song Don't you wanna sing along? Slave to the radio Slave to the radio Slave to the radio Three, one, three, oh Slave to the radio Slave to the radio Slave to the radio Keep on running, never stop And do I got the moves To make it stick, yeah To get the clicks, yeah Technically I have every move Can y'all keep on coming Like a machine, yeah Be a blue jean, yeah What can we do to get you on the news? Slave to the radio Slave to the radio Slave to the radio Oh, the little wave. <laughs> that was a cute wave. 
<laughs> oh, man. Oh, that song's a jam. That was Radio from Sylvanesso live on KEXP at home from their 2017 record, What Now? The new record, Free Love, is out now. It's so, so good. Highly recommend picking it up. And obviously, normally, you'd be out on tour right now. You probably are on tour most of the year, every year. How has settling down and having to stay at home been for you? And have you learned anything new? Have you been doing any new hobbies? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> we, we've been we've been putting this record out. Yeah, yeah, like the whole time. So we haven't really gotten any any point. We know we don't yet know the meaning of not being really busy. In, yeah. Yeah. Other than like March when like. We, along with the rest of America, were kind of everyone went, in, went into seed pod, seed pod mode yeah. and just kind of cocooned. So after this record is now that the record is out, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I'll probably make a lot of very in depth soups, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things to do. Awesome. Glad to, I'm glad to let our fans know that instead of touring, we will be pivoting to soups. We're going to be pivoting. Uh, it's yeah. be a soup-based band from now yeah, on. Yeah, soup-based. We need a cookbook. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> One could. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. It's The toughest part, I think, for us is that touring, we, we do it so much because it's our favorite way to talk to people who resonate with what we do. So that's been the biggest challenge is just trying to figure out how to keep that conversation going in a way that feels authentic. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a real problem with, I think, a lot of the normal ways that people communicate digitally. I think they feel kind of, they feel fake for us, you know, I think. And and so there's this kind of hurdle there to get over. We, We kind of turned a corner, I think, with it when we started thinking about it in terms of what was possible now that wouldn't have been possible on tour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, like, we've been really leaning into that, just trying to figure out n- new ways of shooting performances, new new ways of kind of, like, letting people in. So much of our music and, like, the decisions we make with our, like, the public face of our band is all about opening the door for somebody and, mm-hmm. and making sure that they feel like they have an entry point into, like, the whole community. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, spe- speaking of letting people in, obviously during these times we're we're doing live videos in our own homes. How has that been for you? How has it felt to to have that different sort of boundary being crossed? Um, it's always a challenge to find true authenticity in a digital space. Yeah, yeah. that is like the name of the game right now for me. Um, it's also as as someone who's an entertainer and also as artists, I think it's really the world is already asking us to contribute most of our authentic selves into like fo- our phones or to, into the social meds and stuff. Um, yeah. So I've been working on a lot, like figuring out a boundary, particularly because the only way that we can communicate with people is on digital platforms that aren't, that are owned by terrifying conglomerates <laughs> that are uh, using our attention to uh, as currency. Yeah. Um, and I hate, terrifying. I like really, yeah. really, really dislike contributing to that for myself. And also to think that um, I am getting my fans, our fans to contribute to that by looking at the things that we're making on those digital platforms also kind of gets my goat and makes, you know. Yeah, um, it's a tough balancing act. Yeah, I'm having a lot, I'm, you know, I'm rethinking my relationship to capitalism right now. Um, so that's where I'm at with it. In other words, it's weird to have people in your home. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. it's totally weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for continuing to share yourselves with us through your wonderful music which we are so happy to have new music. And um, you recorded a cover for us as well for this performance. We did. We did. Can you please tell me what you chose and why? Oh, I'm so excited about this cover. We have been trying to find, we've been trying to cover this song for like literally years. And then when the vid arrived, it made like so much more sense in a different way. This is by my favorite, favorite, favorite 
Stina Nordenstam. You may remember her from the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack and also oh, yeah. being awesome. Yeah, she's incredible. Uh, I love her. She does not talk to very many people on the internet or at all. Which I fully understand. Which I totally understand. I, I, I love her a lot. And uh, this is her song, Winter Killing, yeah. off of the record of the same name? No, I forget. It's her last record. Yes, it's the most recent. Yeah. Nice. This is Sylvanesso covering Stina Nordenstam's Winter Killing live on KXP at home. On cold days it is easy to behave in, easy to believe in it. On cold days it is easy to stick in, easy to believe in it. They won't just kill in you That you can't stand the season It has no smell or flavor I left the city for you There was no other reason I did your wife a favor You're safer with me here
I love the waves again. That was beautiful. A uh, cover of Stina Nordenstam's Winter Killing from Sylvan Esso live on KXP at home. Did you, is that the record? I, found, I just had to say it. We were wrong. It's called The World is Saved. I, I couldn't let that go. This record is so good. <laughs> awesome. The record it's off of is called The World is Saved. Yeah. Perfect. You have inspired me to dig into her discography for sure. That was awesome. Oh, it's so good. Oh, amazing. Uh, so Vanessa, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. It was so fun hanging out with you and chatting. Thanks so much for having us. We always love getting to talk to you guys at Katie. Yeah, you guys have always been so supportive and we really, really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. And so excited about the new record, Free Love. Make sure to buy the record, support artists. Buy the new Sylvan Reco- Sylvan Esso record, Free Love, out now on Loma Vista. And Amelia and Nick, have a great rest of your day, and hopefully we'll see you soon live in Seattle. Yay! Thanks, Morgan. Thank you. Yay. And thank you all for tuning in today. Appreciate you. And make sure to check out our live events calendar. We'll drop that in the chat if you want to check out what virtual events are coming up and lots more at kxp.org. I'm DJ Morgan from KXP. Have a great day. It's KXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.